ever feel like you're constantly chasing after this idea of perfect? Like, you know, trying to reach this picture perfect life with mm-hmm. the perfect job and the perfect body and yeah, even that perfect Instagram feed. It's like this endless pursuit that never quite seems attainable. Totally. And today we're really going to dig into this whole idea of perfection. We're unpacking a YouTube video that really challenges that conventional notion of what it means to be perfect. Oh, this is going to be good. It's from the channel Your Higher Self, and they kind of flip the script on us. They argue that perfection isn't about checking off society's to-do list. It's more about like a mental shift. Right. It's about changing how you view yourself and the world around you. Exactly. And what's really cool is the speaker illustrates this with a really, I don't know, disarming example. They talk about having a beer belly. A beer belly. Yeah. But here's the thing. They don't even drink beer. It's like this funny, honest moment that shows they're comfortable with who they are, what society might call ideal. They're like, okay, this is me and I'm good with it. You know, it's amazing how much power we give to those external messages about what we should look like, what success should be. It's true. And sometimes it feels like we've internalized those messages so deeply. We start judging ourselves based on, I don't know, standards that might not even resonate with our own values. It's like we've absorbed all these societal expectations without even realizing it. Yeah. And, you know, it makes you wonder whose definition of perfect are we even striving for? The speaker asks this really thought provoking question. Why am I not perfect? You know, and it's like, wait a minute. Where does that feeling even come from? Uh And I think that's the key, right? Identifying the root of that feeling. Is it coming from within or is it a reflection of what we've been told we should be? Right. It's like maybe those perceived imperfections are, well, they're part of what makes us interesting, unique. Now, the speaker takes this whole idea a step further and introduces this concept of the higher self. And I'll be honest, this is where it gets a little, I don't know, complex for me. How would you explain that, the higher self, in a way that, you know, makes sense? Okay, so imagine the wisest, most authentic part of yourself. It's that inner voice that encourages you to be your best, even when you kind of want to just give up. That's your higher self talking to you. It's that potential within you just waiting to, like, emerge. Okay, I can get behind that. It's like this wellspring of, I don't know, wisdom and guidance that we all have access to, but maybe we just like forget to tack into it sometimes. Yeah, exactly. We get so caught up in the noise of everyday life that we lose touch with that inner voice. And, you know, the speaker uses this really powerful analogy. They say your higher self is perfect and your higher self is just as much a part of you as your wart on your hand. Wow. It's like, you know, it's such a vivid image, right? And it really drives home the point that perfection and imperfection, they can coexist. It's a good reminder that we don't have to be flawless to be worthy or whole. We're all a combination of strengths and weaknesses, and that's okay. We're all a work in progress, but that doesn't mean that we're not already like inherently worthy and valuable. Exactly. (gasps) And remembering that is so powerful. It's like we fall into this trap of thinking, okay, I'll finally be happy with myself when I achieve all these things. Like, it's always out there, you know? Right, like happiness is on the other side of some finish line. Yeah, exactly. But this idea of, like, embracing our higher selves, it kind of flips that, doesn't it? Totally. It's not about adding more to our to-do list. It's about Mm. tapping into what's already there, that inner wisdom, and realizing, you know what? We are already whole. We are already complete. I love that. It's like shifting from... I don't know, a scarcity mindset to like an abundance mindset. Absolutely. Instead of focusing on what's missing, we can like start appreciating all the incredible qualities and and potential that we already have. And I think that's a really important point. You know, it ties back to what we were talking about earlier about like societal conditioning. Yeah. The speaker emphasizes that true fulfillment, it doesn't come from other people validating you. Right. It's about you recognizing your own worth. Achievements and awards are great, but... They don't define you. They don't define you. And, you know, it's refreshing to hear someone talking about self-improvement without, like, putting themselves on this pedestal, you know? Yeah. yeah. The speaker is so honest about their own journey. They even admit they're not some, like, perfect teacher or role model. Yeah, they own their imperfections. They do. They even make fun of themselves sometimes, which I think makes them so much more relatable. Exactly. (laughs) Because they're not claiming to have all the answers. They're sharing their experiences and and what they've learned in a way that, you know, makes you feel like you can relate, like you could find your own truth. It's like, hey, let's figure this out together. You know? Yeah. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. But speaking of societal conditioning, how do we actually start to like 
break free from those deeply ingrained messages that tell us we're not good enough. Because they're sneaky. Oh, they really are. It starts with just noticing them. The speaker talks about how we often censor ourselves even in our own thoughts. Like, we're afraid to even think the thought, I am perfect. It feels wrong almost. It does. Yeah. Because it feels like... <laughs> egotistical. Egotistical. Yes. <laughs> or arrogant. Yeah. Oh, I relate to that so much. It's like, we've been conditioned to think that, like, striving for perfection, okay, that's admirable, but actually believing that we've achieved it... It's not okay. Well, hold on. Like, that's getting a little too big. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, you should be humble. You should be modest. Don't don't get too big for your britches. Yes. Yeah. It's like this weird paradox, right? Like, we embrace affirmations like, I am peaceful, I'm attracting abundance, but I am perfect. Ooh, that's a tough one. Right. It feels, I don't know, almost taboo. Mm. And the speaker really challenges us to, like, examine why that is. Yeah. What is it about that word perfect that makes us so uncomfortable? Mm. You know? It's a good question. Is it that we're afraid of becoming complacent? Like, if we actually believe we're perfect then we'll just stop growing, stop evolving. Right. Or maybe it's because true growth, it's not about reaching this like fixed idea of perfection. Right. It's about embracing the journey. Mm -hmm. Like you're never going to arrive. You're always becoming. Yeah. And that means embracing those parts of ourselves that we, you know, label as imperfections. Because they're part of what make us who we are. Exactly. They're part of the package. The speaker even brings up this really interesting concept of above so below which like resonates with i know a lot of spiritual traditions yeah it's a common thread it's like they're saying that if we're clinging to this belief that perfection exists above us then we're denying the perfection that's already within us it's a powerful reframing we're not separate from perfection we're connected to it it's within us so it's not about like ascending to some higher realm to find perfection it's about recognizing it's already here it's about remembering who we truly are but how do we actually tap into that you know like how do we start living from that place of i don't know inner knowing that is the million dollar question and you know the speaker acknowledges that no video no book no teacher can actually show us the way to our higher selves because we're already there we already are. It's about remembering. So it's about quieting that inner critic. Yes. The one that's always telling us we're not good enough, we're not thin enough, we're not successful enough, whatever the message is. All those not enoughs. Ugh, the not enough. It's about reclaiming our power. You get to decide what perfection means for you. It's not about what society says. It's not about some external standard. It's about your values, what you're good at, and how you define a good life. So, so good. But, you know, it's easy to, like, talk about these things, but how do we actually start living from this place of, I don't know, self-acceptance and inner perfection? Like, what are some things we can do? Well, it's not about piling more onto your to-do list. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> it's not about striving for some unattainable ideal. It's really about shifting your perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, start by noticing the good things in your life. Yeah, those little wins. Celebrate those wins, no matter how small. Love that. It's about... Finding those moments of joy, of celebrating our achievements, and just realizing, you know, we are enough, just as we are. You are enough. But it is easy to slip back into those old patterns, those old habits of, you know, self-doubt and comparing ourselves to others. Oh, absolutely. It's a practice. It is. It's definitely a practice. Yeah. What advice does the speaker have for those times when, I don't know, we're just feeling anything but perfect? It's like we're retraining our brains, you know, to see perfect, not as this, like, unattainable thing, but as... As a state of being. Yes. A state of, I don't know, like radical self-acceptance mm. where we embrace all those messy, beautiful parts of ourselves. It is radical, especially when you think about like all the messages out there telling us we need to be fixed. We need to be better. Right. It can feel like an uphill battle sometimes. So as we wrap up this deep dive into this whole idea of perfection, what's I don't know, what's the biggest thing you hope our listeners take away from this conversation? If you remember nothing else. Yeah. You are already perfect, yeah. just as you are. Don't let, like, society or expectations tell you otherwise. It's about embracing our individuality, you know? Our strengths, our, our quirks. Your so-called flaws? Yes. Because those are the things that make us who we are. They make you interesting. They do. It's like, instead of trying to erase those parts of ourselves, what if we just, like, celebrated them? Exactly. When we can accept ourselves yeah. fully, without judgment, that's when we tap into our own, like, inherent perfection. But it's not about, you know, getting to some finish line. Right. It's an ongoing process. It's a journey, not a destination. 
I love that. And it all starts with this like simple but powerful shift in perspective. So as you go about your day, you know, ask yourself, what's one thing you're really good at, even if it's not like traditionally considered perfect, something you do with like quiet excellence that brings you joy? Oh, I love that. It could be anything. Being a great listener, making the best chocolate chip cookies, whatever makes you, you know, light up. Exactly. Embrace that. Celebrate it. Because that's where your unique brand of perfection shines through. What a beautiful thought to end on, creating this like ripple effect of authenticity and self-acceptance. Thanks for taking this deep dive with us. Thanks for having me. This has been The Deep Dive, and we'll catch you next time.